It may look a little dangerous, but this spiky dish is a delicacy with a lot of fans. The centerpiece is a red sea urchin, a creature once the bane of local abalone divers that is now a boon. Originally kind of a nuisance fishery a little bit, uh, something that you know some of the ab divers would do a little bit part-time and bit by bit it got more and more developed. Uh, it really took off with Japan in the late 80s, early 90s. Our urchin got discovered and they found the quality and a really good supply during their peak demand. Today, red sea urchin harvested from our Channel Islands is regarded as some of the best in the world. Santa Barbara's known for their sea urchin is because of the meroir, I like to call it, um, it's, you know, analogous to a terroir with wine. The things that they're eating, the temperature of the water, the nutrients in the water, the habitat in which they're in, it, it has everything to do with how they taste. But it's not just our sea urchin at the top of gourmet's must-have lists. Other locally caught seafood is prized as well, like the spiny lobster. It's considered much sweeter, and uh, if you're just going on its global value, it's much, much more highly valued on the global market than American lobsters on, uh, on the East Coast with the claws. Our spiny lobsters are right in there with all of the most valuable uh, lobsters uh, uh, in the world. Being the only sheltered harbor for 127 miles, Santa Barbara is uniquely situated to take advantage of an array of desirable species off our coast and at the Channel Islands. Santa Barbara is um, kind of, um, positioned in a transition zone from uh, southern to central. It's right there at the bend with Point Conception in the state and you get a lot of um, mixing in that there's cold water currents mixing with warmer water currents from the south. And so you have a variety of fluctuating uh, populations of fish. Urchins cycle around different times of the year and the, the Channel Islands have so many little kind of microclimates as you would say or, or micro habitats so you can almost always find pretty good urchin out there. Being the closest to some of the best fishing grounds has its benefits. Santa Barbara based fishermen haul in more sea urchin, lobster, rock crab, sea cucumber and white sea bass than anywhere else in the state. For the last third of a century, local commercial fishermen have hauled in an average of 11 million pounds of seafood a year. That catch has earned them an average of $11 million a year at the dock, while at the same time making a substantial positive impact on the local economy. But that economic uh, uh, benefit, if you will, when you add an industry accepted multiplier for fuel docks and ice houses and retail and wholesale and restaurant staff and what have you, is about a $30 million economic benefit to, from our fisheries here in Santa Barbara. The city and the waterfront department have long realized the importance of the commercial fishing industry and supported it accordingly. And this harbor has been real fishing friendly. It's one of the few ports with public hoist, and that in itself has, has helped a lot of fisheries develop and develop alternative markets. You're not locked into dealing with a certain buyer or an expensive fee to get your catch off loaded. And we have an ice, ice house here. So this harbor is really great to, to fish out of it. But a healthy, sustainable fishery doesn't just happen. It comes from management. And today's management goes far beyond the simple size and season restrictions of the past. It's gotten a lot more sophisticated zonal management, setting some areas aside for no fishing so they can enhance species outside the zones. Also, what's really changed in fisheries management, and it's very encouraging, is that managers aren't managing in a vacuum anymore. Fishermen have become very much involved in the management process. Fishermen are the most environmentally conscious, conserv you know, conservative, uh, people on the planet because if that resource is gone then we're out of a job so we want we definitely want to look out for the longevity of a, and sustainability of a resource. In keeping with their environmental goals the commercial fishermen of Santa Barbara have been making a push to promote local sales. 90 percent of the fish consumed in the U.S. is imported and that doesn't make any sense and as a as a viable um, energetic economically strong port with all this diversity in what we catch and, and sell, it makes no sense that more of what we produce locally doesn't get directly into the Santa Barbara consumer market. If you're buying your seafood from a, of a, from a supermarket, you have a huge disconnect of where exactly it's from. Um, you don't know how old it's been, you don't know how it's been treated. 
when it comes from somewhere outside of the U.S., the regulations and the, the rules and the laws are, are more lax. Uh, it's just like farmers markets, you know, when you know, know the people that are harvesting what you're taking home to eat, there's a better connection there. And then when you know your customers on a first name basis or more personal basis, you definitely take a little more pride in, in what you're producing and, and putting out, you, you know, because if somebody's not happy with your product, you get the phone call. <laughs> you can get fresh, locally caught seafood in Santa Barbara in a number of ways. The Santa Barbara Fish Market at the harbor is open seven days a week. You can also buy seafood at surprisingly good prices right off the boat at the Saturday Fisherman's Market. Generally, it's less money if you're buying directly from your fishermen, especially for quality. And what we've done in order to make the experience appeal to a broader group of people is we've created a fillet station so that if you come to buy a whole fish, we can process that fish to some point, whatever you, whatever you choose. And there's an aesthetic to it. There's an aesthetic to, to picking up a red rock cod and holding it in your hands and realizing, wow, I got this straight from that man who caught it on this boat. It's just, it's just part of the whole dynamic. It's really cool. The other way to taste our locally caught seafood is to patronize the growing number of restaurants that now carry it. It's in the sushi restaurants, it's in the regular restaurants. So I give them a heck of a lot of credit because they've taken this value added concept and really gotten traction with it. And uh, it's a, an important part of the fisheries these days. It's our name and our face behind that product. We, we want to provide that best quality to our community. We're going to. Yeah.